There we go. Hey guys, welcome back to Knife Mania. Um, actually hanging out this weekend with some really cool dudes. I don't have permission to speak um, on their behalf. But uh, really cool people. Uh, had a great time. Started talking to them and everything else. And... Wow, I gotta clean these knives. <laughs> anyway, we started talking. Uh, the, a couple of them, uh, at least one of them, subscribed to my channel right in front of me. Um, got to talking about uh, survival knives. I mentioned to them, you know, I had just ordered a, another survival knife. Man, I got it. I gotta clean my shop, and we got the talking and everything else, and they made some very good points, as well as they thought I was uh, right on my points. So, uh, my idea of a survival knife. So, man, you guys can't see my eyes. So, my idea of a survival knife is something that's at least about four inches i mean bare minimum i typically prefer something as uh six inches or bigger wow i can already see it now that's what she said anyway <laughs> i have several knives here that i've actually used as survival knives uh don't want to use them anymore and i'll go into the reasons about it uh got a brand new knife here as well uh which kind of sparked the conversation so cheers let's get into the smallest knife that i would consider for survival okay that is the same knife i carry on my hip while i ride Felt me even F1. Now, I would not carry the uh, OS 10. Uh, this is the COS. Or C yeah. Oh, wow. I still got from scraping the fire steel. <laughs> At least I use my knives, people. <laughs> um, it's handy. It's lightweight. It's on my hip. I can throw it in my saddlebag. And there are gnats everywhere. Why do I have gnats in my shop? But, uh... Very comfortable to use. Uh, can do all kinds of carving. However, it's not... To me, a survival knife literally needs to be bigger. Because you're going to count on that knife to not only be a knife. It's going to be a really well-rounded tool. Okay? So, to me, this is small. But this is great for, like I said, when I'm riding. When I'm camping backpacking stuff like that or it's great at food prep it's great at carving um like i say i just can't do bigger jobs with this knife okay and it's it it, it goes back to the old saying a big knife can do everything a small knife can but a small knife can do everything a big knife can so Could you survive with this? Absolutely. Would I want to? No. And with that being said, please don't forget, I'm not just a one knife guy. Uh, I will always at least have a pocket knife on me. Uh, today's Claymore, the Benchmade Claymore. A good sturdy fixed blade, maybe a saw, or maybe an actual survival blade. So... For the longest time, I was hunting for a survival blade. And back when I used to actually make my own knives and forge my own knives, I made this one. Um, it was mirror polished at one point. <laughs> but again, I use my knives. Um, it is quarter inch thick. Uh, A2. I was trying to remember what steel I used. Um... I got one nick. Can you guys see that? 
right there. Barely. But yeah, I got I got one nick in the blade. And that was from uh going through a a, a log and there was a screw or a nail something in there. Um I can fix it very easily. I just haven't yet. So why don't I carry this one? Uh, why don't I still use this one? Because this was one of the very last custom knives I made. So, I mean, it's got a sharp 90 degree spine. Where's, where's my ferrule rot? Oh, I took it inside. But it's got a nice crisp 90 degree spine. About three quarters of an inch ahead that way I don't have sharp edges here where I put my thumb or during doing my reverse cuts um, very small sharpening choil I don't like a big sharpening choil um, a figure and choil is one thing but as far as a sharpening choil goes I don't want a big sharpening choil it'll catch on everything and everything else um, I went with white liners uh, Green micarta, uh, titanium pins, A2. Like I said, I forged and sanded and polished and everything else. Uh, the grind, it's uh, probably three quarters of the way up, but it is a convex grind. I made sure I put. Can you guys see that? Hold on, let me see. Yeah, you guys can see that. It's it's a convex grind. I love convex. Same thing with the F1. Convex. So. But yeah, since this was the last knife I actually really made. I need to clean it. I need to take that little nick out of the blade. Um, I'll polish it back up. Oil it back up. And then I'll probably put this away as a keepsake. Okay. So that's why I'm not using this blade anymore. Uh. The handle grip, I don't know. I I mean, it fits my hand perfect, but it was made for me, by me, not for anyone else. So this grip, it gives me enough room to where if I put gloves on, I can come back here. I got the pinky lanyard. I come back here, choke on it. I can do the chopping with it. It's got enough weight. It'll do it quarter inch thick with the convex grind you're not worried about batoning you're not worried you know, you can beat the snot out of the knife okay uh went with a long drop point um because i wanted the strength in the tip but i also wanted the penetration survival in case you gotta do a little stabby stabby i wanted it to be long enough to where i could do, get through at least four inch round uh wood i wanted the convex to be high enough to where it's still very slicey so i can do my food prep cleaning game which i would normally choke up like this you hunters you know it you get inside the cavity it worked really well uh taking the height off well the height i would almost want more of a belly but anyway uh so this one I made for myself. Uh, the next knife that I retired, which I might buy another one, is my Bark River Squad Leader 2. It's out of 3V. This thing works like a charm. Again, quarter inch thick, 3V. Uh, is that a clip point or a straight Yeah, that's a straight clip point. No, it's got a little curve to it. Yeah, it's got a little curve to it. But uh, I have beaten the snot out of this knife. And <laughs> the reason why I'm thinking about getting another one um, is because I really like this knife. I really like using this knife. You've seen it in videos up north, er everything else. Nice, sharp 90-degree spine. A little bit of jumping there. It handles almost a little bit. Now, I have extra large hands. But with gloves on, you can see where I'm all the way out here already. 
Uh, convex grind again. Um, a little bigger sharpening choil than I like, but it's not. It's not horrible. Uh, nice fullers on both sides. I love this knife. I really do. Um, but the reason why I'm, I, I quit using it is because I have like eight Bark River knives and all but two are first production runs. And this is another first production <laughs> run. <laughs> so, uh, I need to clean it, put it up, probably get another one. If you notice, this is very similar to the one I designed. Um, the blade, blade cutting edge. Cutting edge is a little bit more on this one, but it's got the the clip point here or whatever. That didn't work so well as far as like uh, when you got to make a bow drill, anything like that. This point follows. Where's my straight edge? That's not my straight edge. Where's my straight edge? I lost my straight edge. But anyway, from the center of the handle, up through the center of the pins, all the way up the blade, comes to the point. So it's very center point. This one, it's close, but with that curve and everything else, eh. And if you look at the tip, maybe it would show better that way. Yeah, right here. It's very precise, which, okay. Mine's a little bit thicker, <laughs> a little bit stronger. So, and they both weigh about the same. 3V, A2. Um, you definitely have to take care of them both, which I haven't been. <laughs> but I can clean them up and put them away. So... What's another knife that I would love, or that I've actually gone taken out in the woods and used, is another, okay, I can't remember what I paid for the squad leader too. I know it was over $200. <clears throat> the F1 uh, COS, I think it was just under or just over $200. Now, this knife is a big knife, and it's about as big as I would go, okay? This is, oh, uh, actually, I didn't pay for this knife. The missus bought it for me as a Father's Day present. Uh, my very first Father's Day present. And it is a beast. It is my detail, oh, jeez. I gotta clean this one too. Maybe while I'm out here after I'm done making this video and uploading it, I'll clean my knives. But this is a D-Tope. D-Tope? Yep. D-Tope Kukri. Quarter inch. 3V. I can't remember the grind. I need some. I need my straight edge, dang it. Where's my straight edge? I must have taken it inside. Do I have anything? Oh, there. There we go. Piece of 1095. Okay, it's flat ground. And then the secondary edge they put on it, I didn't care for. I made, I put my own uh, convex secondary edge on it. Um, I have used this up north. I think I videotaped it, everything else. Well, why don't you use this one? Well, sentimental. You know, it's, wow, I really got to clean that. There is still sap on it. No rust, but sap. Um, great chopper, everything else. The handle it feels great. But if you look at the handle, when it gets wet, that is slick. <laughs> um... For survival, I would honestly, I hate to say it, I would wrap this handle with some hockey tape or something like that. 
Um, but as far as the blade goes, I love my kukris. I love my buoys. Um, but yeah, that's why I would I would never carry this as my survival. Wow, my survival knife. Um, yeah, this is another one of those knives I'm just going to have to clean up and put up. But, I mean, very expensive knife, a very good knife. Um, one of my favorites. Even the handle feels great. It could be a little bit thicker. It's very flat, almost like a... What was it? The old Ontario Rats or the uh, SEs, uh, like the SE6 or something like that. I guess that would be closer to Unglis, Unglis, Junglis, whatever you want to call it. So, yeah. But now for the knife that sparked the conversation that I had with these individuals, these gentlemen. Uh, I told them I ordered it. They were very... perspectively looking at it and everything else and i told them the, my main concern isn't isn't the material because it's it's not a 1095 it's not a 3v it's actually a 1075 which is a very tough steel but it's not going to hold the edge as well as 1095 or 01 or a2 or 3v but they went nuts with it so, what did I get? And I'm not going to do a full review on it, but this is the Tops Operator 7. Ugh. This has the, the new bronze coating. Oh, wow. I didn't even really look at it. There you go. You can see the bronze or the goldish color of the blade. Um, very oily. This is made out of 1075. Uh, apparently they redid their heat treat and everything else. Uh, no, I do not plan on going out and purposely trying to destroy a knife. I never see the point in that. But, man, that is beautiful. Here's my problem with this knife. It heavy. She's very heavy. Now the, the the sheath is very nice. I mean it's Kydex, it's tops, it's the dangler. Came with the whistle. Super super nice knife. Lightweight, too small. Heavier knife, but first production. Last cuff custom knife I made. Still heavy. These two, you're going to feel the weight. This one was almost too big to me um, because you'd, you wouldn't carry this on your belt. You'd throw it in your bag or something like that. So I started thinking about this. I've been wanting one. I've been eyeballing one. I just, I, I don't know how it's going to work. I haven't tried it out yet. Um, it's over a quarter inch thick. It's uh, 0.3 something. Almost. Uh, you know what? I got a tape measure right behind you guys. It is literally just under. Oh, it looks like it's uh, 5 sixteenths. 16th over a quarter inch. Oh, that feels good. That's that's a nice finger twirl. I like that. Back guard I can get over. I wouldn't want to carve like that for very long. That that'll dig into the palm of your hand horribly. But yeah, so we're gonna be testing this one out, see how it holds up. And for right now, I'm going to give this a run. Someone suggested, uh, when I first brought up the idea that I'm looking for a new survival knife. Um, what was it? The Lion Steel 6? Uh, check that one out. 
I actually, a buddy of mine had it. I'm honestly leaning towards the, what is it, the Lion Steel M7, I believe it is. Um, damn, I can't remember the other knife salon. I, I think the same person suggested. Checked that out, looked at it, eh, came across this one. Uh, there was another Tops I was looking at. Um, the salt blue, oops. They were in a hurry. Uh, saw blade on the back and stuff like that. I don't... I mean, I had a Topps, uh, Topps Brown. Love that knife. But at the same time, I kind of didn't like that knife. It was just... I figured it out. And once you figure out how to use those blades, they're awesome. But it still wasn't quite what I was looking for. So, anyway. Uh, just a... A little longer than a normal video for me. Uh, going through a couple knives. Uh, still going through the uh, evolution of figuring out my ideal survival knife. Um, missiles will probably shoot me because I'm probably going to order a few more knives and test those out. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. I mean, uh, what's your ideal survival knife? Is it... Um, I mean... Go ahead, shoot out details. I mean, blade material, 3V, 1095, um, some super stainlesses, like uh, now we got magnet cut out. Well, it's been out for a while, sorry. But uh, me, I'm old school, I like carbon steels, just saying. Um, handle material, handle length, blade length, blade thickness, grinds, um... I mean, get in there, start a discussion. Um, I'm working at it. I'm trying to... I thought this was my do-all, save-all, but... I noticed even this was kind of short. You know what? I got that tape out. What did I do with it? Okay. Blade length is five and a half. The Bark River... I got five, five and seven eighths, so just under six inches. I know this one's just under four. And by the way, when I'm measuring blade length, I'm measuring from the highest point on the handle to the tip. I'll call that one three and seven eighths. Let me measure this. Even though I know I know this is doesn't have as big of a cutting edge, but got seven about seven and five sixteenths overall from the very top here to the tip. Cutting edge wise, we're looking at six and a half. Put that away before I cut myself. This is not the first tops I've had. I've had the tops Texas Creek XL. I've had the tops Texas Creek, and I've had a Bob. So I do know tops knives. I I enjoy them. They're tough knives. On the tope. Jeez. I think that's ten and a half. Highest okay, point there. No, that's eleven inches. <laughs> so like I said, this is about as big as I would ever go. Um and if I could find a different one with a different handle. Something that's not so sentimental. But you guys see me use this. I've got yelled at, but I've thrown it. So, there we go. So there you guys go. It's uh, evolution, right? Find a knife that you like, that you want to try out. Save your money. Go for it. Like I said, this is the latest. Oh, jeez. That's going to take some breaking in. Uh, yeah. 
So I'll give this a shot, see what I think about it, see how it works for me. I'll tell you what, that grip though, that's that's nice. Oop. <laughs> that didn't take much effort. So anyway, there she is, the new one. I want to help if I turn it the right way so you guys could read it. So anyway, while I'm uploading this video, I'm going to kick back and take care of these knives. They really need it. I didn't think I'd let them get that bad. Oops. At least you guys know I use them. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Until next time, as always, keep your fingers out of the way. Keep your knives sharp. Be safe out there. Actually, I said that backwards, but you guys get it. All right. Talk to you all later.